So once again, I welcome you all for the second lecture of this week of IGST. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about wherever we guys have stopped. And I still remember we are going through the provisions which are made for place of supply. And in these provisions, whatever we have seen, I think uh, those are the part and parcel of those provisions. Even today also, we are going to see some provisions which are related related to which are related to uh, <coughs> the part and parcel of place of supply so now i am starting my presentation and uh, you just tell me where we guys have stopped and you also tell me whether my screen is visible or not Is my Hello? No, sir. Yes, sir, you are audible, but I can't see your screen. Huh? Now it's visible. Okay, it's getting me off. Okay, just wait. <coughs> okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to show you the presentation. What was the last uh, slide where we guys have stopped? 14. Huh? Slide number 14. Insurance Slide number services. 49 is going to start, right? Slide number 49, na? 14. No, sir. 40. 40. Okay, okay. I'm going to start from the slide slide number 4039. I think we have done with slide number 39. So whenever we guys have stopped from that particular point onwards, we are going to see. So this one was the last slide which we guys have seen. And now we are going to see this slide number 40. And here we are talking about And here we are talking about insurance services. So this particular act, which is called as uh, Integrated Goods and Services Tax Act, is also a part of GST. The main domain is GST. So GST has covered all types of goods and services also. So if we get some insurance and insurance related services, those are covered under the GST also. So today in today's session, we are talking about insurance related services. And whatever services are there, if we get some insurance related services, if we go for home loan, if we go for NPS, we if you go for EP, Employees Provident Fund Organization or PPF. So all those things are covered here. And uh, if it is there, then if we get any sort of insurance service, so in that case, what will be the place of supply? So that we are discussing here. Just look at this. As far as this uh, slide is concerned, I'm going going to talk about if we get some insurance related services then what will be the place of supply so there are two categories they have made category number one is registered recipient and category number second is uh, unregistered recipient. Mm -hmm. If the registered recipient is getting some services which are called as insurance related services or insurance services, in that case, the location of the recipient.
in is the place of supply. <coughs> Sorry. We are here to decide what will be the place of supply on the basis of time. of recipient if the recipient is registered then the place of supply is what whatever is the place of recipient if the uh, recipient is not registered or if it is unregistered then in that case how to decide the place of supply? It can be decided on the basis of what? On the basis of location of recipient in supply. As record, whatever uh, recipient's location is mentioned is there in the record of the supplier. That could be the or that is the place of supply. So here, if we get some insurance related services, so there are two uh, parameters to decide place of supply. This is of or type of recipient. If the recipient is a supply that we can understand by looking at see we have seen if insurance services are provided we and we said a place of supply if it is registered then whatever is the location that would be Hello? Yes, sir. Nice, sir. I was break with you. I was a mother. Oh, Sangat 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 Others also they have to respond if I'm not getting if you are won't you know won't get properly. Okay, once again we are starting. Uh, I'm going to share my slide. If please tell me whether it is visible or not. Slide uh, presentation mother this take a sangha. Take a presentation. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, I shall. Okay. Uh, like it's through Korea. He has some name, got out online. The house motor drawback, otherwise, it is very good to have lectures offline. So, we have done with slide number 14, and uh, that was related to insurance related services. So we have done with uh, insurance related services, and we have decided the place of supply on the basis of two different parameters. If it is registered, then whatever is the location of the recipient is called as place of supply. And in case of unregistered recipient, whatever is the record with the supplier, that could be the place of supply we have seen. Now, now we are going to discuss about section number 13 as per the IGST Act 2017. And here we are discussing about place of supply of services. If the services are provided, outside India, then what are the provisions we are going to see? Where supplier or recipient is outside India. Out of these two, sometimes supplier is from North India, supplier is not from India, it means he is from outside the India, or sometimes recipient is not Indian, or he is from outside India. This one is the situation or this one is the condition. So in this condition, we are going to see about 
how the place of place of supply of service is decided so in section number 12 what do we guys have seen same point we have seen but the condition was different in section number 12 of igst act we have seen place of supply of services and the condition was where the supplier and recipient both are from india but here in this case where the supplier or recipient is outside india out of these two one is not from india sometimes supplier is not from india sometimes recipient is not in from india this is the situation so under this section 13 we are going to talk about place of supply of services and how the place of supply is decided in this particular case the assumption is what out of supplier or recipient one is not from india it it means somebody is from outside the india in this case what sort of provisions we have made for deciding the place of supply of services which we are going to see in this particular session so starting with the first provision look at this specific rules for services there are certain rules for the purpose of services and those we are discussing here so friends these are the you know rules which we can make we can see here and those rules i have you know uh, taken here for the purpose of better understanding so look at the first one where goods required to be made physically available when we want to make goods physically available available to the recipient then uh requiring physical presence of receiver or person if the physical uh, physical presence of the receiver or the person who has bought those services is required directly in relation to immovable property if it is related to immovable property then what sort of services or what sort of rules are there that we can see by way of admission to organizing an event if you are going to uh, get an admission to an organizing an event if you are going to organize one event and if you are getting admission for that sort of event then rules are different then transportation of goods services if you are giving a service of transportation of goods then what sort of the rules are there passenger transportation service that is st pmt then railway all these can be called as passenger transportation service then service on board of conveyance it means service that we get at the airport or you know even at the port port means bandar in marathi then online information and database access or retrieval services this one is a separate topic we are going to see if we get some online information and database access services then what could be the place of supply again that is a point of discussion then banking services to account holders if services are given to the account holder then what sort of services or how the place of service is decided or place of supply is decided then intermediary services are also there next one is hiring of means of transport other than aircraft vessels of two one month if services are hired if we hire such kind of uh, transportation services then what could be the you know what we call it place of supply so these are the or for these purposes specific rules of services are made or for services are made and we are going to see all these specific rules under this particular section section 13 of igst act which is made for place of supply for services when supplier or or where supplier or recipient is outside india so these are the specific rules which we are going to see now look at this place of supply of services general rules we have taken here where supplier or recipient is outside india now we are going to see the general rule like uh, rule uh, like previous one so what is the general rule look at the rule now location of the recipient available in the ordinary course of business whatever is the location which is available in ordinary course of business that could be the place of supply if it is available if it is as then location of the recipient if the location of the recipient is not ordinarily available if it is no then location of the supplier if the location of the supplier is available with the supplier then location of the recipient if the location of the recipient is not available with the supplier in that case location of the supplier is called as place of supply in simple term i will tell you see ha rule kya mande hai javes location recipient location uplabdh nasta tyavale supplier sa jo address hai to place of supply asel and javes uplabdh asta tyavale location je hai recipient sa 
to place of supply as well in a simple manner. Now, here are some case studies which we guys have taken for the purpose of better understanding, and from that we can understand. Look at this. This one is a case study for the purpose of understanding, and uh, from this we can see what is that exactly. Look at this one. Place of supply for service when a recipient and supplier both in India. See, we are deciding a place of supply for a service provided by the supplier, but the condition is what? The supplier and recipient both are from India. They are not different than India. So see, as per section 12, subsection 8 of IGST Act or CGST Act 2017, the place of supply of service by way of transportation of goods, including by mail or courier to, in this case, what we are going to decide, we are going to decide the place of supply. Targeting, our target is what? Place of supply. We are going to see different provisions to understand the concept of place of supply. We are going to see different, uh, you know, situations and under that, the place of supply, how it is decided, that is the point of discussion. So according to this clause or according to this section 12, subsection 8 of CGST Act 2017, there are two clauses for deciding the place of supply. Clause number A, a registered person, if it is a registered person, then shall be the location of such person. Whatever is the location of that registered person is called as or will be or shall be the place of supply. Then a person other than a registered person shall be the location of location at which such goods are handed over for their transportation. Look, if the person is not registered, if the person is unregistered, in that case, we are going to see the location where the goods are handed over for the transportation purpose. Jatikani goods to me, recipient la patwana sati, hand over kela. For example, the recipient is from Baramati and goods are handed over at Pune for the purpose of transportation. So the Pune is the place of supply in simple manner. Now, the second one, look at this. Place of supply for service where, or sorry, when either recipient and supplier is outside of India. So from this, we can understand uh, if the person out of two persons, one is recipient and another one is supplier, is outside India. And uh, according to this uh, section 13, subsection 9 of IGST Act 2017, the place of supply of service by way, transportation of goods other than by mail or courier to. So here, what we are going to see, if the person is not or out of those two person, recipient or supply, out of those two, one is from outside India. Just now, this is our section and section 13 is applicable of IGST and uh, subsection 9 is applicable for this. And this is basically the type of service. Which type of service is this? Transportation of goods. Service is what? Transportation of goods. So goods transport service they are providing. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what will be the place of supply? And here they have given, shall be the place of destination of such goods. Wherever shall be the place of destination of such goods. Wherever you are going to deliver these goods. Wherever you are going to transport these goods. Suppose you are sending these goods, uh, these goods from Pune to Baramati. So Baramati is the destination. So Baramati is the destination. It means what? Baramati is the place of supply. Getting my point. So this is what this way we decide according to section 13, subsection 9 of IGST Act about the place of supply. And the condition is what? When either recipient and supplier is out of India. Now, place of provision services. Now we are talking about place of provision services. So here, we are going to see the Finance Act for the purpose of understanding this place of provision services. We need to refer Finance Act. Why we need to refer Finance Act? Because certain provisions are made according to the Finance Act 1994 in the um, IGST Act. And this is what we need to refer Finance Act 1994. So as for Section 66B of Finance Act 1994, there shall be levied a tax. Tax levied means what? We charge the tax. Uh, there, here in after, referred to as the service tax. So see, 
before this uh, before the introduction of gst we had different taxes and uh, those taxes were called as indirect taxes so in those indirect taxes we had one more tax which was popularly known as uh, service tax so it was service tax at the rate of the 14% on the value of all services i think we guys were aware with the tax percentage of uh, service ta so tax uh, percentage of service tax uh, when it was uh, you know abolished the percentage of tax was 16% and uh, they are talking about when it was 14% other than those service specified in negative list they had a uh, two list negative list means what are those list or the uh, the you know, elements which were there in negative list were didn't have any tax as such and this is what that sort of list was called as a negative list provided or agreed to be provided in the taxable territory by one person to another and collected in such manner as may be prescribed so it was collected according to the taxable territory and it was collected from one person to another person also in a specific manner so in this particular paragraph we have taken an idea about service tax which was applicable according to the finance act 1994 and uh, here we have just taken an idea about service tax when it was implemented what was the provision what was the negative list and what was the percentage of service tax and so on and now as per rule 10 of place of provision of rule 2012 place of provision of goods transportation services So here we are talking about one particular provision which is made according to this Finance Act 1994, which is called as Provision of Rule 2012, and uh, as per Rule 10, it is there. So here this particular provision is made for the purpose of goods transportation services. If you are going to transport the goods, if you are providing this kind of service of transportation of goods, then certain provisions are made. So those provisions we are going to see here. Provision number one is what? the place of provision of services of transportation of goods other than way of mail or courier shall be the place of destination of the goods and the next one is what provided that the place of provision of services of goods transportation agency shall be the location of the person liable to pay tax so from these two definitions we can easily understand what is there in rule 10 of uh, the provision of rule 2012 for the purpose of goods transportation services and uh, this is for place of provision services am i audible sir okay now uh, we are i think uh, at the verge of this uh, place of supply so some things we are going to highlight here some things we are going to see in a thorough manner so look at the next one delivery duty paid stipend uh, shipment sorry delivery duty paid shipment under service tax regime so we are going to get an idea about this delivery duty paid shipment and which was there under service tax regime as we know that uh, we had service tax also and we we used to pay service taxes to the government so what sort of relation is there between delivery duty paid shipment and uh, service tax that we are going to see so here we are talking about what indian freight forwarder this one is concept in the you know in gst as well as in service tax indian freight forwarder that also we are going to see so see uh, what is there in this one once again i am going to tell you the difference i'm telling you the association i'm going to tell you the correlation between this delivery duty paid shipment and under service tax regime so here are something just look at this here you know uh, animation is given if you look at this indian exporter the person who is exporting from india is called as indian exporter then indian freight forwarder uh, the role of forwarder will start when the role of exporter is over then consignee the person who is there to receive the goods or services outside india is going to receive the goods or services on behalf of the exporter of india in other country that is called as consignee which is there in out of india no doubt at all then freight charges we know freight charges means what the charges which are charged for the purpose of sending goods from our country to another country which is called as freight charges 
and those are exempt under rule 10 of uh, place of provision of service rule 2012 as i told you there is one particular rule which is meant for the purpose of place of provision of service rule according to 2012 act and according to this place of provision of service rule 2012 whatever charges we pay as freight charges are exempted then pickup charges other charges we also go for pickup of uh, picking up those services, picking up those goods, and we pay some charges. Even we pay other charges related to uh, other services. So if we pay pickup charges, other charges for exported goods in other country, those are taxable, taxable and service tax payable. So whatever charges we pay for those purpose, then those charges are taxable. Even those are payable also under the category of service taxes. See here, what you guys have understood? We guys have understood delivery duty per shipment. If the uh, delivery duty is paid as far as the shipment is concerned, and uh, what sort of service tax regime is applicable for that? And this is what we have taken one example here. What is that example? <coughs> Sorry. Example is very clear. We have taken one example of Indian exporter who is exporting goods to foreign country. So for the purpose of uh, exporting goods, there is one particular person which is called as Indian freight forwarder, which is also called as intermediary. And he does some work on behalf of the exporter. Even he does some work on behalf of the consignee. Consignee means the person who is receiving the goods or the recipient of goods on behalf of the exporter. And he won't be there in India. He will be outside the India. That is very much clear. Then freight charges, sorry. Freight charges means what the charges that we pay for the purpose of transporting goods from India to other country. Then pickup charges, which are exempted according to the rule, chain of place of service, uh, place of provisions of services. Then uh, here we are talking about what pickup charges and uh, other charges, which are applicable for the purpose of uh, for the purpose of uh, sending goods from one country to another country. And those are taxable, even uh, service tax is also payable on that. And this is what it is called as pickup charges, which are not exempted according to the uh, place of provision of service rule. This one we have seen thoroughly. And now we are going to see the next slide. And from in that slide, we are going to see something different. What is that? Just look at this. Delivery duties of paid shipment. <laughs> Delivery duty paid shipment under GST regime. We have seen under service tax regime, but as the service tax is abolished and it is no more, so what is there? We have, uh, you know, GST, we have GST regime now. So, what would be the delivery duty paid shipment according to GST regime? We are going to see now. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Also, similarly, uh, we are going to see the same process which we have seen <coughs> according to the service tax regime. Now we are going to see the same uh, thing under GST regime. So this one is a GST regime, and what GST regime says, I think uh, you guys have, uh, if you guys have observed that carefully, you can understand the difference. Uh, I think first three points are seen. Indian exporters uh, was there. Here also it is here. Indian freight forwarder was there, it is also here. Uh, consignee was there, it is also consignee is also here out of India. So in exports the goods to foreign country, there is a one person which is uh, useful, which is which plays the role of uh, intermediary, which is called as forwarder. Then consignee takes the delivery on behalf of the exporter, and the rest of the work consignee will do on behalf of the exporter. So these three points were same as per the first or as per the GS uh, service tax regime. And uh, I hope you have remembered that whatever I told you in the last slide. Last slide talks about that freight charges were exempted under the rule team of uh, place of provision rule 2012. It was exempted. But here in case of GST regime, freight charges are taxable. Even pickup charges and other charges are also taxable. If you consider the previous one, I will show you the previous slide. Look at this. Here, under service tax regime, 
freight charges were exempted, whereas pickup charges and other charges were taxable. But here in this in this uh, DST regime, even freight charges are also taxable, and pickup charges and other charges are also taxable. This is the only difference. In case of service tax, which we had in the past, those days only freight charges were exempted. But here now, freight charges are also taxable in case of GST regime that you need to understand as far as delivery duty paid shipment is concerned. Now, the next one. Mm, services that is goods required to be made physically available by a re recipient to see what uh, that particular recipient is expecting look at this services that is goods required to be made physically available by the recipient recipient is asking to make uh, availability of goods physically at the place of uh, at, at his particular place and this is what he uh, called the supplier and asked for the delivery this is the situation of services. So here we can see this particular person is, uh, you know, just going through the car. Something is wrong with the car. And uh, he wants some services. This is what he went to the service center and got some services. So in this case, what will be the place of supply? Wherever those services are actually performed, it means what those services are actually performed at service center. So service center is the place of supply in this particular manner because he wants those services physically happened at his or at that particular point. So all these services are happening at service center. This is what we can say. These services are actually performed at service center. And this is what the place of supply is none other than service center. So service center is the place of supply that we can understand by looking at this picture. Now, services requiring physical presence of receiver person acting on his behalf look we cannot uh, you know we cannot remain present or we cannot avoid our presence for these kind of services if you want to get a haircut is it possible to get haircut without your presence no we should be there our presence must be there at the point of uh, saloon for getting haircut. So there are certain services where we need to be there physically. And this is what this kind of provision is made. Just look at the provision, what they have said in provision. Services requiring physical presence of receiver. So there is a requirement of the receiver. He should remain present physically for getting those services receiver or person acting on his behalf look at this location where services actually performed and uh, in this case how to decide the place of supply wherever those services are actually performed that particular place is called as place of supply suppose you are going uh, for your haircut at saloon so saloon wherever that saloon is located situated that particular place is called as place of supply now here uh, there are two clauses I have mentioned in yellow boxes. So just look at the first yellow box. Services provided from remote location by electronic means. If the services are provided by using uh, electronic means from the remote area, then what could be the place of supply? Location of the goods. Whatever is the location of the goods, that could be the place of supply. And the second yellow box talks about goods supplied are repaired and re-exported without used in India. So in that case, whatever is the location of the recipient will be the place of supply. Now, look at the next provision. And from this provision, we are going to understand something. Services supplied directly in relation to immovable property. If the services are provided for the purpose of immobile property, for example, if you are constructing home at your native place, and if you want some services, if you want engineer services, if you want architecture services, if you want earth moving services, if you want JCB for that. Okay, so if you are getting these kind of services which are related to immobile property, then what will be the place of supply that we are going to see? 
so see this one is a civil engineer from delhi and he is providing his services to a contractor for the construction of building who is there in us so see engineer is from delhi and the construction of a building is there in us so he is providing his engineering services or civil engineering services to a site of us so in this case what is the place of supply wherever those services are actually provided whatever is the location of that immovable property where that building is going to be constructed the building is going to be constructed in us so us is the place of supply and this is what i have written in the last sky blue box that is what location of such movable property immovable property or where it is intended to be located for example uh, this is the situation for example this civil engineering service uh, or engineer is providing services to new york but the actual building is going to be uh, established in washington so washington is the place of supply in this case so the person who is providing services his place is not important but the where he is providing his services is important one as far as the movable properties are concerned so this way we can understand how the place of supply is decided in case of services supplied directly in relation to immovable property next number services by way of admission to or organizing an event etc and ancillary services if we are going to or if somebody is going to organize some events for example matches even award shows and so on so in that case if services are provided then what could be the place of supply so see these are the spectators from australia and uh, they are going to watch the match in india so they are coming to watch the match in india so what will happen what will be the place of supply so wherever that particular event is going to be happened match is going to be happened in india so india is the place of supply for example if in in india also for example if match is going to happen in mumbai then mumbai is the place of supply that we can see just wait huh? so this is what it is called as place of supply and this way the place of supply is decided so uh, i hope you guys have understood what i meant to say now the last one we are going to see and from that we can understand what could be the place of supply if we get uh, banking services to account holders suppose you are an account holder of a bank and if you are getting banking related services then what could be the place of supply then intermediary services then what could be the place of supply then hiring of means of transport other than aircraft and vessels up to one month so in this case what could be the place of supply that we are going to decide so if you look at this uh, certain things we have taken here bank then intermediary services we have taken even transportation service also we have taken so in if we all are getting this kind of services then what could be the place of supply no doubt whatever is the location of the supplier whatever is the location of the supplier that could be the place of supply in general manner so here we have done with slide number 54 and we have come done with banking services to account holder intermediary services to the recipient and hiring of means of transport we hire ola we hire uber we hire taxi we hire car even we go for n number of hiring of services or a hiring of transportation means in that case who is what is the place of supply so in all these cases the place of supply is none other than location of the supplier that we can understand i hope you guys have understood about these contents today whatever i have delivered from uh, I, and uh, in tomorrow session we are going to see the slide number 54 just remember or whenever my next session is there remember this number 54 and uh, we are going to see something about this slide number 55 sorry slide number 55 and uh, we'll start from this slide number 55 next session so only this much for today's session i hope you guys have enjoyed my session and uh, with this i'll get back to the home screen and there we'll discuss your problems we'll discuss your question we'll discuss your queries and difficulties if you have काय प्रॉब्लम असतील तर विचारू शकता
आहेत का काय प्रॉब्लेम्स नो सर थँक यू सर